So, let's talk about the design philosophy of offense versus defense. Now, when I'm on my lunch break, I usually just watch whatever is going on in the latest tournaments for games that I'm interested in. Usually it's Smash Bros, Armored Core, but there was this one video that popped up in my feed about the current state of Tekken 8. And it was about how some pros feel the game isn't really fun anymore because defensive options really aren't what they used to be and how the game now rewards offense way more than defense. Now, I personally am not saying that this is a good or a bad thing. I think the devs are probably just trying some new things out just to see what sticks because you kind of have to do that. Otherwise, old players will feel like there's really no difference between the old and the new game. But I do actually sympathize with the pros who are talking about this because I have noticed the exact same shift from defense to offense in games that I do really play a lot, like Armored Core. For those of you who don't know, Armored Core is basically from Software's mech alternate universe of Dark Souls, and it's a very extreme game. You build your own character by putting a combination of hundreds of different parts together in whatever way you think is best, and I won't nerd out about the specifics about how Armored Core gameplay works, but long story short, the latest version of the game is the most offensive-oriented version in the entire series. It heavily and disproportionately rewards offensive gameplay, and because the netcode removes most opportunities to correctly execute the few defensive maneuvers that remain, there are generally two types of viable strategies that you can use to play the game. Overwhelming offense with speed, power, and health, or maintaining a safe distance to avoid interacting with the enemy's offense altogether. These type of play styles are essentially all you will fight if you go into ranked mode at the highest level right now. And what's interesting for me is this is also the kind of gameplay that I've been seeing a lot more of in other games that I regularly watch, like Smash Bros. At the highest levels with the world's best players, we are starting to see the more extreme characters basically just start to tear check their opponent. We have the epitome of offense, Kazuya. We have the epitome of distance maintenance, which is Sonic. And the character that just disengages from the battle completely and plays their own game, Steve. Now, I am aware that Spargo and Leo and Light have overcome these obstacles with characters like Cloud, Fox, and Byleth, but I don't think that changes the fact that, in general, trying to use skill with a mid-character that relies on fundamentals like Roy, even as a world-class player against an opponent that has overwhelming offense, you're constantly fighting from disadvantage. Because if you make one mistake, you die. Meanwhile, the enemy has to make four or five mistakes in a row before they die. The risk and reward simply isn't there. Because when it comes to all-out competition, the best way to win is almost always never let your opponent play. Now let's take this out of any specific game and think about this in terms of resource and risk-reward management. Let's say you have two players of equal skill. What are the resources needed in order to successfully attack? Well, if you break it down, it really comes down to two things. One, are they in range? And two, if they are in range, when to attack. That's really it. If you have those two skills and you guess correctly, then you win. The enemy dies, their life ends, and yours continues. Now let's look at the skills required to successfully defend an attack. As the defender, like the attacker, you also need to know, one, are they in range? Two, when are they going to attack? But you also need, three, the reaction speed required to identify their attack. Four, prior knowledge required to correctly respond and counter the attack and five, the physical ability to execute the counter correctly. Because it doesn't matter if you know what to do if you do not have the physical ability to pull it off. All five of these points have to line up perfectly for you to succeed in your defense. And if you fuck up even one of these points, you die. And the worst part is, if you succeed in your defense, your reward is literally just surviving. Contrast that to the reward for the attacker, which is winning and surviving. So on a simple basic stage, by default, offense is not only easier than defense, it is also disproportionately more rewarding and has less room for error. And what we learn from this analysis is because the requirements for a successful defense by default are higher than the requirements for a successful offense, this means defensive gameplay is naturally a more skill-oriented mechanic. Simply put, the fewer defensive options you give the player, the smaller the skill gap between new and old players will become automatically. Now, I think this is the actual real reason that most games that are coming out today are shifting to a more offensively oriented gameplay. On top of being shorter, faster, 
more visually explosive. It also by default makes it easier for new players to come in and hang in with the older players. Because in reality, being able to pull off defensive gameplay is a luxury for the skilled. If you have the ability to defend against your enemy, then that means that you already understand exactly what your enemy was going to do, when they were going to do it, how they were going to do it, had the proper countermeasures planned and practiced ahead of time, have a high enough reaction speed to identify the threat before it happens, the physical abilities required to execute the counter correctly, and the confidence to pivot and adapt based on what you see your enemy doing if you are wrong. And if you can do all of these things successfully, that basically means you already heavily outclassed your enemy to begin with, and you absolutely could have won faster using offensive tactics instead of defensive ones. See, it really just comes down to basic risk and reward. The reward for the attacker is winning the game. The reward for the defender is surviving. Most players want to win, and they want to win with as little effort, time, and resources as possible. Offense uses less resources, so most players will default to an offensive strategy if it's available. So what's the takeaway from this as a game developer? Simply put, defense by default is more difficult than offense. The more defensive options you put in your game, the bigger the skill gap will be between the veteran and the new players. Giving the player lots of defensive options is cool, but if you want players to actually use them, you need to make the reward for successfully pulling off those defenses worth it. Otherwise, you're basically going to see your game turn into a jousting competition, which might actually be what you want. But the point is, in general, the easiest way to win is to attack first and to attack fast. So you should be aware of this when you are developing your game and are trying to balance both offense and defense. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.